Thank you, Paul. That was really that was great. Um, so we're going to move back to Garen, and he's going to go over some of the additional um, changes that have been made. All right. Yeah. Thanks again, Paul. That was uh, there's a lot of great stuff in there. Um, so a couple of a couple of things. We'll get into sketch enhancements. I've got just a couple of items here, and then we'll get into some videos on some other things. But um, some sketch enhancements. Some you know we've heard from some of you around performance. Uh, some constraint issues. We've fixed quite a few of those things. So you'll notice you have better performance in sketching. Some of the constraints, the constraints, dragging, updating, things like that. Um, some some improvements around the ellipse, and then some of the tangency handle fixes. So you know these are just some things that we've heard about from you guys. And uh, if you've seen some of these, go in and, and try them out. See if if your issues have been fixed. If not, please let us know. Um, but getting into the modeling side, um, I think this is another area that we've done some pretty cool enhancements. So I've got a video here. I wasn't as, uh, as, as I guess, uh, daring as Paul, so I'm doing this through a video. But you'll notice in, uh, in here that placing things like threads, in the past we could do cosmetic threads, but you know, from some of you, if you're doing 3D prints and want physical threads in here, we now have a toggle in the thread dialog. Uh, you'll notice you have all of your regular threaded, threaded sizes, but I, have, I can also come in and say give me a visual or a, a physical thread and it will cut the material away from my object and I can, I can turn that on and off. Um, in the sketching environment, if I create a sketch, I can now right click and edit that sketch. It's kind of fast, but I can directly edit that sketch right from the window or right from my model. Um, in things like hole, you'll notice if you create a hole and then drag it around, you'll get centroid of faces, centers um, that you can drag and snap those to. So we're trying to make it more obvious, um, you know, areas that you can snap those to and, and work off of. And then a, a big request in extruding or push pulling um, an element or you know a, a face from a sketch. As soon as you'd be, as soon as you'd finish one extrude, it would turn the sketch off. If you turn it back on and do it again, it, it would keep turning it off. So now we persist it on if you've turned it on until you decide to turn it back off. Um, another one is in the sweep environment. So we also have a chaining option here. So you can chain an entire path or you can unselect that and pick just the elements of the path that you want to include in your sweep. Um, if you want to go back and click on chaining and pick another element, then it will automatically select the entire edge. So it just makes it pretty easy to, to get what you want out of there. And there's, there are a handful of other enhancements here. Um, if you go to the, the hub, Kaching will talk about the hub a little bit later. But if you want to go out to the hub, we have a list of all the enhancements we've done, or the majority of the enhancements we've done to, to S3. So these are just a handful of the other ones in the modeling side. Um, in, the pot, in the patch enhancements, so you, know, you have the different environments. You have the modeling, the sculpt, and the patch enhancements. And you know this uh, this is really useful in bringing in external data. You know whether it comes from SolidWorks, ProE, or somewhere else. If you need to to make some fixes to it, if there are some problems, we have a handful of tools that you can clean it up and work with. Um, one of the things we did in this environment is added the ability to loft between a couple of surfaces, which we had before, but you couldn't control tangency or curvature continuity. So now we just added some options to be able to control um, how how those blend together. And then we've also improved some validate some of the, the validate results just to make sure that um, what you're getting is what you would expect. And then getting into the the assemblies and multi bodies, there are some really nice enhancements here. We'll get into some of the motion capabilities too. But um, to start out with, if you have sketches and you want to constrain or join those use joints to to add relationships, you can now use joints with sketch geometry. Um, I will say we, we still have some things we're working through. I can't just grab that sketch and drag it and see how it works. Um, you know, I can go to the, the joint handles and, and grab and manipulate it there. Uh, you'll notice in here I, I can grab that handle and spin that around. So it's just sketch geometry, but I, I can't grab it and drag it just yet. But we're, uh, we're definitely getting there. Um, and then also some enhancements. If you've got a grounded component and want to do a copy and paste, that was a little tricky in the past. You really need to unground it, but here you can leave it grounded, do a copy and paste. I can even do it from the context window. The second one is no, it's no longer grounded, so it just makes it easy to be able to copy and paste those. Um, those of you that want to use new groups within your browser, 
In the past, we could only create new groups of patch entities or surface entities. Now you'll notice I have a body, a sketch, a body, um, teeth line, and a, a surface, and I can grab each of those and move those into that group. So you can put, you know, any any entity type in there. And then getting into, to, I think, a pretty fun area is being able to run motion studies. We've made a lot of improvements here, just usability. So in the timeline there, I can select uh, any of those tracks. Uh, I can pick the, the end nodes quite easily and make modifications, delete them if I want to. Um, so it's, it's much more usable than it was before. If you haven't used the motion study, I highly recommend going in and playing with it. But I can grab a couple of joints, put their, their conditions where, you know, kind of the start angle, the end angle, or the start offset, the, set, the, the end offset. And then I can grab that scrubber and slide it side to side and see it update. Um, and we'll put a couple more things in here and then you'll be able to see it animate back. But on the right side, I can see the joints that participate in the track. I can pick those nodes and make modifications. Here we just play it back and, uh, and we can see this animation. So it's a real nice way to be able to animate your design. And um, the motion studies has been in for a little while, but we've just made a lot of enhancements to it. And then a, a final one in here that I think a lot of you will like, especially when you're trying to send in designs to us, there's an option now that you can export your archives or export to archive underneath the, the drop down next to design. So you can basically hit export archive, give it a location and a, a file name, and it'll export it local so that you can archive that or if you need to share it with us through support to be able to figure out what's going on with an issue, you can send that to us, so making that a, a bit easier to collaborate with right now. Um, you know, we are making some enhancements in the future around the dashboard so that you'll be able to email URLs and, you know, share designs that way. This is kind of a stopgap, and then if you do want to do some archival, you can archive your, your designs. Um, but browser enhancements, there are a number of things that we've done here. Um, one that, that I really struggled with, the, the bulb highlighting was a little bit slow if you had a decent sized design especially on the Mac, that's uh, much faster as you're kind of going through the turning things on and off quickly. And then let's just play this video. A um, little bit of overlap to some of the things that Paul showed, but first off, if I grab a component, I can turn the visibility off or hide these components, and that's great, but it was tough sometimes to turn all those things back on, so I can grab the top node and just say show all components, and all of those will come back on, so I don't have to do it one by one. Um, I also have the ability, if I turn a body off and go and, and move over it in the browser, it will highlight the wires of that body so I can easily see what body it is without having to turn it on and then back off. Um, at the moment, it doesn't work at the, the component level, but we'll work on that. And then one of the things that Paul showed a little bit earlier was being able to turn certain components unselectable so that um, I can still see them in the graphics window, but I can't select them. I, I select through them. And then some of the navigation enhancements. This first one, uh, you know, we're, we're working on multi-touch, uh, especially around uh, Wacom devices. And if you have a, a Mac multi-touch pad, um, some of the new window machines are starting to come with those. But we want to be able to have multi-touch so you can do things like pinch to, to pan or to zoom, two finger moving around to pan, um, you know, just, just a handful of multi-touch capabilities. It's been a little finicky, so we're still working and polishing on that. We should turn that on here uh, in a little bit. But no, it's coming, but it's not in the current release. Uh, and then we also have made quite a bit of improvements around the 3D devices, so the space balls. Um, they were pretty pretty clumsy. Uh, two, 2 and 2.5, we've made a lot of enhancements. They work pretty well. So you know, definitely please try, try those and give us your feedback on it. Uh, I know some of that is just kind of how it feels overall, so we'd like to see if it's kind of smooth and, and what you would expect. So that's on the navigation side. Um, with that, I'm going to turn some time over to Kachin to talk a little bit about some of the social and hub and, and help and all that kind of fun stuff.